Hello YouTube. Got something completely different from my regular fare today. I'm making a segmented bowl out of walnut, mahogany, and figured maple. For once, I don't make any major fatal errors and it turns out beautifully. So stick in there with me and let's see how it goes. So the first step after the design is to cut all the segments of the various wood species and uh, those segments that will then be glued into rings and the rings stack to make the bowl shape overall. And all that has to happen before the turning. Since this is my first segmented turning I decided to just go with 12 segments per ring and that way I wouldn't have too many things to cut and for each ring it would only require four segments of each species since I have three different woods. I learned how to do this whole segmented turning thing from watching videos by a number of YouTubers but the best one was uh, the Papa 1947. I'll link his video down below and uh, a card up in the upper right so you can go check out his thing if you really want to see somebody teach that really well. This video has actually been months in the making and one of the things you can see here is uh, well first the wedgie sled which I made on my CNC and also this glue up jig that I got from another YouTuber which I'll link down below and this really helps get all the rubber bands set up and I use a little wax paper to keep stuff from sticking to it but uh, really makes the glue ups faster. This first one was actually a little clunky, but after this, they were really, really fast. So this part of the process is pretty critical um, making both faces of the rings parallel because that way when you stack them up then they will grow vertically from the base and you won't have some kind of weird slanted off axis bowl. There are many, many ways for a segmented turning to go bad. And this is another one of them, making sure that base is flat and perpendicular to the axis of the lathe so that when that first ring gets glued on there, all subsequent rings, which are also nice, flat, and parallel, they'll grow perpendicular to the base and everything will line up really nicely. So 
So my first mistake, important safety tip, protect the bed of your lathe from glue. I fixed it on the second one, but uh, I had a little panic there as I got a little glue on the bed. You can get it off and make it nice and slick again, but it's a pain. So make sure you do that. I was pretty nervous about this part because I'd never done it before and I have a ton of work already into what you see here on the lathe and the last thing I wanted to do was have it explode on me so I was pretty tentative to start out but once I got going it was it was really nice to turn. super happy with how this is going right now the cuts off of the tools are super clean because of the side grain that I'm cutting and the grain is really coming through and the combination of colors is really starting to pop Here's the other critical part here. Once I have the inside finished and all the glue joints are gone, I have to make sure I only connect the inside corners of these rings. If I go too deep, I'm gonna run out of material and I'm gonna just destroy this thing. So I'm gonna be real slow. The other thing I was struggling with a little bit here was I did the design several months before I did the turning 
and I had an idea of what my design profile was, but uh, I wasn't consulting it at this point, which was probably not real smart, but um, later on it became more important. You can hear that high pitch as I'm turning towards the rim. That's because this wood is bone dry and it's starting to get thin, so it's resonating as I'm making the cuts. So I have to be careful once again. Here's where it really would have helped to pull out my original design file. Noticing here I'm going to have to flare this quite a bit at the rim, and I seem to remember that that's what I designed, but I was kind of hoping I didn't make a mistake somewhere and I was going to run out of material. Fortunately it worked out, and uh, my previous self was pretty smart. This was the part that made me really nervous. I checked the thickness where the thinnest part of each ring was and it was fine, but uh, as you can hear that high pitched sound, the whole thing was pretty thin and it was just kind of singing as I turned it. And uh, I was hoping I wouldn't mess it up. I appreciate it if you've gotten this far, and if you're enjoying it, I uh, hope you would consider a like and a subscribe. That really helps me out. I appreciate it. Also, at the very end, after the pictures, 
I put just a little bit of information on the CNC for my sled and also the design software I used to design the overall bowl. So you can check that out if you're interested. This was the final possibly fatal error that I made from way at the beginning. I made the base two thicknesses of maple and the screws didn't go that far in and I thought they stopped in the first layer but they went a little bit deeper than I wanted to so I was hoping to keep a little more thickness of the bottom layer but I ended up almost turning all of it away but it turned out pretty nice. The finishing process on this piece was quite a bit longer than I intended or wanted it to be. I started out with sanding sealer because I wanted to fill some of the pores of the mahogany, which be, can be kind of deep. And in the end, I ended up using uh, five coats of lacquer on the whole thing. And uh, I was pretty glad actually that I did the sanding sealer because it did help with those pores. The finish looks pretty good here, but when I got it off and took the faceplate off, I realized there was some pretty bad swirl marks in the very bottom of the bowl and some uh, kind of orange peel type defects in the finish. So I had to actually re-sand the entire thing and then spray the lacquer and then do the polishing again. So final finish you're about to see is after all of that happened, which... I didn't want to film and subject you to again. Uh, here's a little bonus content for those that are interested. Uh, here you see a screenshot of the design of the bowl that I did in Wood Turners Pro. This is again a program that I discovered through the Papa's channel. And uh, super cool here. I mean, you can see the resemblance to the finished bowl. Even the wood species are pretty darn accurate. So it's really, really nice to do the design stuff. And again, I would refer you to uh, the Papa's videos 
on how to use this. He has a really good one on that. These next two things you see here are the CNC file that I used to cut out my wedgie sled parts and the setup wedges for each of the number of segments per ring. Those are super critical to get accurate, otherwise the, you won't get a nice circle and you get glue joint gaps and all that. So I want to do those on the CNC so I didn't screw it up. And then the last picture is the uh, glue up jig with the peg holes and the rings and there's actually markers you can see on there for the different diameters and that's the file that i use to make that glue up jig if you're interested in any of these things please comment down below and uh, i'll think about putting them on my website to uh, download thank you for watching